Welcome to an instructional video on how to read the SBAC test blueprint page. This is the paper that I am referring to. It was requested during the fraction coherence training and given to our representative of all grades 3rd through 8th after the training. On one side you'll notice at the top that it has the grade and a subject area. I photocopied them in a way that math would be on one side and ELA would be on the other. Now let's talk about how this page is laid out and where I got the information from. This chart was built using the Mathematics Summative Assessment Blueprint, which is found on SBAC's webpage. If you look at it, it's very extensive, very long, somewhat hard to read. This page summarizes those findings for you. So if you want to get deeper, go ahead and check that out. But as for now, let's take a look at this chart. Now the four rectangles here are separated by claims, which are major learning targets that the SBAC is going to test. Now the first one, claim one, notice is checked off as depth of knowledge one and two. Now these are short answer select response items at a very low depth of knowledge. This is 40% of SBAC. Keeping in mind this is fourth grade math I'm talking about. The next one, claim 2, gets up to DOK 3, 20%. Claim 3, 20%, going up to DOK 4, and claim 4, 20%, going up to DOK 4 as well. So that's how the different rectangles are separated. And then you look at the major cluster items. Now, the cluster items are separated by major clusters on the left and additional or supp supporting clusters on the right. So 15 of the items for our major clusters and 5 of the items are additional or supporting clusters. And you can see that over and over again here. Here we only have one section, it's all major clusters, and there's only three short answers here and two to three performance tasks. If you're wondering about this two to three, I'll talk about that at the end. And then at the end, again, claim four, major clusters, additional. So what does this mean? As a teacher, looking at all these standards written here, what kind of things should I look for? Well, I went ahead and took a look at all these standards and decided I saw some patterns. For example, operations and algebraic equations right here, it is a major cluster here, it's a major cluster here, it is a major cluster here, and it's a major cluster here. So how much time have I dedicated to operations and algebraic equations A. It should be quite a lot because when you look at it as opposed to operations and algebraic equations B and C, this is the only time these standards are featured in the entire rest of this um, test. Five items. It's only supporting cluster. So it is not a major focus. So I can think about how I'm balancing my instruction. How about for MBT A, right here? It's featured nowhere else on this entire page, but it is a major cluster, but at a very low level, right? My students will probably have multiple choice questions based on this standard, okay, on A. Now B, for MBT B, that is featured again here and again here. So three times as a major cluster. So I better be really focusing on numbers in base 10 for, um, um, for equations and solving. And then what about um, N, F, A, B, and C? I have numbers of fractions, A, B, and C. Number of fractions, B, A, B, and C. Number of fractions, B. It's featured in every category on the major cluster side. So, fractions. How much am I focusing on fractions during the year? It better be tons. And in fact, I have it leading all the way up right to the test. So I feel like it's the most freshest standard that the students have been focusing on. All right. What about the ones that are not featured so much? That's a good pattern to look at as well. Look at measurement and data. I have some here, you know, five items, a minor cluster. Again, additional cluster, and again, 
in the additional supporting cluster. So does it happen a lot? Yeah, it does, but it's a secondary cluster. So it's going to be supplementative to what other things are being asked. It's secondary. And how about geometry? So we have uh, suggested by curriculum like a full month of geometry, maybe even longer. It is right here, and it is nowhere else on this page. It's only going to be tested at very low levels of knowledge, depth of knowledge, and it's in the five items for additional clusters. So is spending a month, month and a half on geometry as important as making sure that fractions are a major focus? I keep pointing to the wrong one. These three. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure as I plan for geometry that I am not focusing on making sure I get to DLK4 unless one and two are achieved really well. So I hope that gives some advice on how to look at this. Now the last page that I have to show for you here is a focus on the bottom. Now they did a little bit of a summary here for you. Major clusters, minor clusters. Now you can see that geometry written here for you. You can see the fractions is a huge focus here. Now this is summarized a little bit for you to help you see where you should focus, um, spend most of your time. Now, there's a, something I had to address, the performance tasks. It says two performance tasks. It says above two to three performance tasks. I know there's only one performance task. So is this chart finalized and completely accurate? Obviously, there might be some things that have to be changed on it. So I know that the Mathematics Summative Assessment Blueprint was updated in February. So it's very recent on SBAC. And this page was made beforehand, so you might want to compare and see if there's been any changes. But what I'm going to do is feel like this is a flex year. This is another year where our school will not be graded. Students will get recordings, but our school will not be graded on the aspect findings. So I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity to see how accurate this chart is. Is it really, for fourth grade math, uh, a major focus that fractions is so heavily featured and geometry is just a blip on this test. If that's true, when I look and, and watch how students work on their test, then um, it's going to teach me a little bit about um, how accurate this chart was. And then I'll know whether or not it's something I should focus on next year. All right. If you have any more questions about um, helping plan out your year um, and get your students ready for SBAC, then see me and I'd be glad to help. Thanks.